so far we've only had four Republicans actually congratulate Joe Biden. It's really just been a holding pattern for the rest of the party. And so it's today that we've seen some progress on that front with the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell coming out and saying that Donald Trump is completely within his rights to pursue anything that he thinks is suspicious in the count and they should let this process fall through. Now, the thing to remember in all of this is that the key date isn't uh, like an inauguration day here in the United States. It's these two Senate runoffs in Georgia because that's going to decide the balance of power in the Senate and that's going to be the key challenge for the Republican Party now to keep that under their control. And so they are going to try to keep this going right up until that date to keep their base fired up and uh, from their perspective really try to get our voters in Georgia enthusiastic. So we've heard from Mitch McConnell, even if we haven't heard from Donald Trump just yet. We have the tools and institutions we need to address any concerns. The president has every right to look into allegations and to request recounts under the law. Let's not have any lectures, no lectures about how the president should immediately cheerfully accept preliminary election results from the same characters who just spent four years refusing to accept the validity of the last election and who insinuated that this one would be illegitimate too if they lost again. Now, this comes, as you mentioned, as the Attorney General gave the green light to prosecutors to be able to look into allegations of voter fraud. Now, in previous elections, there had been a, a detente on anyone starting these kind of investigations in the lead up to Election Day, because that's the kind of thing that can undermine voter confidence. We didn't see that necessarily this time, because we had this unprecedented situation of states moving to have higher levels of mail-in voting, and there were those early concerns about voter fraud. So now we've had William Barr come out in a statement and say, given that that voting in our current elections is now concluded. I authorise you to pursue substantial allegations of voting and vote tabulation irregularities prior to the certification of elections in your jurisdictions. Specious, speculative, fanciful or far-fetched claims should not be a basis for initiating federal inquiries. That's quite a, a tempered statement from the Attorney General there, and that's as Donald Trump's campaign launches legal action in a number of key swing states, Nevada, Arizona, Georgia and Pennsylvania, where I am now, on a number of different grounds. Some, they're saying that votes were counted that shouldn't have been because they were filled out incorrectly, some that they weren't given proper access to see the vote count. In some cases, they're saying that deceased people were allowed to vote, which, of, of course, if it did happen, would be impossible. And one of the accusations here is that it should, uh, they were accepting votes after the they should have been. But from Kayleigh McEnany, the spokesperson for the president, when she was speaking on this today, she was only allowed about a minute on major networks, including Fox News, before she was cut off for what she was suggesting was the Democrats inviting voter fraud. This election is not over. Far from it. We have only begun the process of obtaining an accurate, honest vote count. We are fighting for the rights of all Americans who want to have faith and confidence, not only in this election, but in the many elections to come. And at now, least the we have case seen... that has the most legs of all the different legal... Sorry, Ash, the, just while we're in Pennsylvania, we wanted to cover off the fact that the most persuasive legal case that we are seeing in this instance is the one that is uh, pushed by the Republicans. They're saying that votes that were accepted after 8pm on Tuesday shouldn't be counted. Now, they have been quarantined because of a previous legal action. That would see a significant shift in the count here if they were found to be unacceptable. But if you look at the current count here in Pennsylvania, it's 49.1% to Donald Trump with uh, just over th the uh, 3 million votes to 49.8% for Joe Biden's 3.3 3 million votes, but that margin right now is only 45,339, and there's just under 4% of the vote left to count. If you assume that that's falling around 70 to 80% to Joe Biden for those mail in ballots that are yet to be counted, he would need a significant ruling here that would really isolate a number of votes, even to win it back to enough of a margin to be able to call Pennsylvania. So he needs to win on multiple legal fronts before he can look at potentially turning this election back his way. It all seems to be heading in one direction, Annalise. Joe Biden, in the meantime, he's not wasting any time. He's announced this coronavirus task force. He's starting to get to work on this key transition period. 
From Joe Biden's perspective, he says he has a strong mandate coming out of the election with a significant popular vote. And so he said he's got a few key issues that he's going to target. First, that includes climate change action, saying that they're going to rejoin the Paris Accord, but also this coronavirus pandemic that really is starting to hit peak levels within the United States. And so he said that he's going to have immediate action on this. This task force has uh, over a dozen different experts, including former officials from the Barack Obama administration. And he said that he's going to be acting on this immediately as he called for Americans to start wearing masks. You know, I know there's nothing the American people can't accomplish when we work together as one people with one mission. We can get this virus under control, I promise you. We can rebuild our economy back better than it was before. We can address race-based disparities that damage our country. It's in our power. So, Ash, there's still a long way to go until Inauguration Day on January 20, but there's still plenty of battles to be fought. And the other thing to watch, too, is we're going to have this decision on the Affordable Care Act out of the Supreme Court, and that's going to put pressure on Joe Biden. If it does rule in the Conservative favour, with especially the balance of power on the court as it is now, that could preclude millions of Americans from health insurance if they have a pre-existing condition. So we can expect some movement on that front as well.